So good afternoon. Um, so I'm Christine Kubiak, uh, the Operation Director of FECRIN, and it's my great pleasure to uh, uh, to welcome you to this uh, second uh, uh, PetCRIN webinar session uh, dedicated to methods for engagement of youths and families in pediatric clinical uh, trials. So I would like to introduce uh, really very shortly the Pet Queen project, so you have an idea of uh, why we are uh, here today. Um, so Pet Queen uh, stands for Pediatric Clinical Infrastructure Network, and um, so it's a Horizon 2020 funded uh, project started in January uh, 2017 for four years and coordinated uh, by uh, ECRIN, uh, European Clinical Research Infrastructure Network. This is a consortium of 15 partners from uh, 13 countries. And you see here all the uh, uh, partners in the, in the project. And the objective of this project was to enhance the capacity uh, for the management of multinational pediatric, uh, mainly non-commercial clinical trials. So this was the objective. And during the course of the Pet Queen, uh, three pilot multinational uh, neonatal and pediatric uh, trials in investigator initiated trials were uh, conducted. Um, the project consisted of uh, three uh, work packages, and in particular, I just want to mention two that are relevant for the for, for today and for the webinar series. That is the development of tools for the setup and the management of uh, neonatal and pediatric uh, clinical trials, and also communication, including patient and uh, families in power one empowerment, which is really the topic of the day. And so without uh, spending more time on, on, on this, I would like to give the floor to, uh, to our moderator, uh, Cor Osterwies from uh, VSOP, who will, uh, will lead this, um, this webinar and uh, present the, the, the two speakers of today. So thank you very much, Cor, and the floor is yours. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Cor Oosterwijk. Um, I'm the director of the Dutch Patient Alliance for Aaron Genetic Diseases, and we are a partner in this project, and we cooperate with the St. John's Hospital in Barcelona in the field of uh, patient and parent and child uh, involvement in pediatric clinical um, research. Um, it's my task to uh, introduce the speakers, and it's my task to look at my second screen and to forward uh, your questions uh, to the speakers. So I will try to do my best to fulfill uh, that role. Um, well, um, and short introduction to the uh, two speakers in this, uh, in this uh, webinar. Uh, uh, first, um, uh, we have uh, Begonia Nafria um, from St. John's Hospital in Barcelona. Um, she's the coordinator of the patient engagement uh, in research area uh, at the St. John's Hospital in Barcelona. And she is also a member of the steering committee of the European Young Persons Advisory Network. And then um, uh, Eric, usually I see Eric daily in the office, but uh, as you can imagine, he's now working from home, but I know him very well. He is a sociologist by education, but um, he also worked as a neonatal uh, uh, nurse and uh, for the last, I think, about 10 years or so, Eric, or maybe a bit less, you are a policy worker at VSOP. So um, the floor is now to Begonia, and I will look at my second screen in case any questions come in. Hello, good afternoon to everybody. It's my pleasure to be uh, today with all of you. We are going to uh, go through different sections in this uh, presentation that also for me it's a pleasure to share with my colleague uh, Erin from, uh, Eric, sorry, from uh, VISO. The main areas that we are going to cover, it's uh, introduced to all of you in the topic about the patient and public involvement. Also, we are going to see what means patient involvement in pediatrics, who uh, we can involve the patients and the families, where, when, how and why. And why. And finally, we are going to uh, introduce to all of you the different experiences that we have in the framework of the Predkin project with the different pilot studies that were performed in this uh, initiative. And last but not least, 
tips and conclusions before to open the, the time for, for the questions and answers that will be moderated by uh, Gore from uh, BISOP. Okay. Said this, let me introduce uh, to all of you the topic about uh, patient and public involvement, the famous PPI uh, short name. For me, it's uh, very important to highlight uh, this definition because it means uh, a change in the paradigm and in the perspective in which we are doing uh, research. It means that we are, uh, in this case, uh, facilitating research with the uh, involvement of the children, the parents, and in general, the families. And it means uh, do research carried out with uh, this uh, group of people rather than uh, to the patients, to the families, about or for them. It's a new change, and this change of uh, perspective and paradigm obviously impacts in a very you know, high level, the community of patients, but uh, obviously the researchers and all the people involved from the logistical part in the, in the performance of pediatric clinical trials. One important top tip when we are talking about uh, pediatric patients is that it's not only the patient who is involved uh, in the clinical trial, it's the whole uh, family. And in this sense, we need to have also this perspective when we talk about PPI, or any other activity in which we want to have on board the, the patients. There are many uh, concepts around the, the definition or the environment related to the patient's participation, but it's important to have on mind the technical words when we are talking about uh, do things with the patient, involve the patients, engage the patients. Because according to these definitions that you have in your screen, the impact and the activities that we can do with them are different. For us, the experts and the people that we are doing our best to involve the children and, and the families in the field of pediatric clinical trials, the definition about participation really means the, the patients, the real ones that are involved in the clinical trial. This is the concept of participation. Before this, there are a lot of activities in which the patients and the families, they can have a very active role. First of all, uh, we have the engagement area or the engagement activities. This is more open to the wide, uh, wider community of patients or in, in some cases to the society. Here you can see examples about activities that we can do in the engagement field, for example, a, a campaign to raise uh, awareness about the need to perform clinical trials with children. This is something that no time by time it's necessary. It's not something that we can do once. In some cases can be focus uh, disease and in other cases can be in general. Dissemination to participants and the public in general about the research uh, outcomes, it's another activity of engagement. And the real value of the contributions of the patients, it's in the middle of this slide, it's in the involvement. Here, we need to have on board the real patients, the ones that are uh, close to a disease or the real ones that are suffering a disease, participating in different activities. They are the ones that can help all the professionals designing clinical trials, for example, to identify the unmet medical needs, to provide their feedback and their uh, input in the, in the protocol design, or even to be part of the steering committee that is behind of every clinical trial. This is a very active participation and really you know, help us to put the patients in the heart of the clinical trials. And for us, this is the added value of any activity that we can do with the patients. Obviously, we need to work in the engagement because this is a first step. Obviously, it's important to have good trials in terms to have no, a good participation, a good adherence, and obviously deliver the trials in, in time and in the, you know, in the plan that we have designed them. But in the middle, we have the involvement. And this is uh, the very you know, uh, important added value to involve the patients. An important top tip here is that uh, research is a social responsibility that we think that cannot be carried out without the patients. Every project deserves activities of patient engagement and involvement. And in this sense, we are going to highlight along uh, this webinar about the importance to create and design and obviously and assess uh, a patient's involvement or engagement uh, plan of activities. 
What is, no, uh, as a general term, patient involvement? It's put the patients in the heart. And as you can see here in the slide, it's not uh, pretend to do clinical trials addressed to the patients without their participation. They provide to us a very high added value that we can never substitute with the participation of other stakeholders. And this is no, what I have mentioned previously, this change of uh, paradigm. Here you have an example. This is a, a real case that uh, usually I put in my presentations because uh, it highlights that in some cases only with having on board one patient or one family, we can change and improve the design of a clinical trial protocol and obviously benefit all the patients and all the families that are participating in this study. This is a boy from US. Uh, he was participating in a clinical trial for, a Duchenne, uh, for the Duchenne condition. And in this case was a very long trial, 96 weeks with a very uh, invasive process to receive the, the drug with an IV infusion. And it means you know, uh, a lot of uh, pain and suffering for, for the kid. The family of this uh, patient uh, were in a, in a meeting with the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, and they requested to have the portacat as a no as a via for for the the treatment, and thanks no to this very close uh, uh, approach of only one family to the regulatory agency, the protocol of this study was adapted, and nowadays no the patients that are involved in this study have the option to receive through a portacat the drug instead to uh, an IV uh, infusion. Top tip of this slide uh, is that patients have the right to participate in science, obviously with an active role, and they will no, ensure this patient-centric uh, approach that I mentioned uh, to you uh, today. Who we can involve in pediatric clinical trials? Obviously, the patients, the children, and the young uh, patients, but there are other ways to represent uh, the group of, the, of minors because not always for the condition or for the age of the patient, we can involve them uh, directly. There are the YPACs, the Young Persons Advisory Groups that I'm going to uh, talk uh, more in detail uh, afterwards. Obviously are the parents or the legal guardians, the ones that are uh, taking care of the patients and also are doing a great and a very hard work, the patient representatives from the patient's uh, organizations. The top tip here when we talk about who involve in pediatric clinical trials is that uh, if we cannot involve uh, directly the patients, always we can involve someone to represent uh, them. Where we can involve the, the patients in pediatric clinical trials? This is a very uh, nice and very uh, well-known uh, slide and, and figure that summarizes that the patients can be along the whole uh, drug development process. From the very early stages, obviously it's the right moment not to know uh, in deep from the research perspective what means live with a specific pediatric condition and design a protocol and along the different uh, stages that at the end no, uh, facilitate to perform a clinical trial and have the outcomes of, uh, of one study. It's important in this, uh, in, in this approach to the patients, as I said, have the right plan uh, on board. There are uh, studies that are quite complex and require uh, many activities to involve the patients because uh, for the complexity, uh, this very close collaboration is a benefit in order to shape the right trial according to the needs of the, of the patients. Every study will uh, help us no, to identify these uh, pain points or points of improvement in where it's important the, the patient's participation. As I said, we can involve the patients in all the different uh, stages. This plan to involve the patients for us, it's mandatory and at the end will help us to assess which is the impact. But also a common tip is as soon uh, we can involve the patients, uh, the better. This saves uh, time and resources and the time as in all, in all the conditions, but obviously in pediatrics in which in some cases we don't have any approved treatments matters. And for the reason, as much we can anticipate uh, anything that can uh, mean, for example, an amendment of the protocol, the better. This is an exercise that hopefully you know, all the people working in clinical trials will include as a common practice, as a common procedure, such as the other ones that are mandatory. 
how uh, involve children and young people in clinical trials. There are many tips here, transparency and objectivity, consider obviously the special needs, have different means or methodologies to involve the children because they are in a specific group and we need not to, to have the right uh, methodologies in terms of uh, format, resources, etc. Have into account the ethics principles and the rights of the children. Uh, consider the conflict of interest, uh, compensate in the, in the way that we consider that it's fair and, and ethical the, the patients and also the cost of the activity. And again, the methodology. The best methodology that we can choose, better outcomes we can uh, achieve with our, with our projects. Usually there are experts uh, working in the design of these uh, patient involvement plans and obviously performing the activities. It's not easy to involve the children and in this sense, uh, the design of the activity, it's a key, it's a key point. Regarding uh, methodologies, you have here different examples. There are focus groups. You can have questionnaires, interviews. You can do a, a patient journey and discuss and, and co-design with the patients the different sections of uh, clinical trial protocol. Are the, the advisory boards, the steering committees. There are many methodologies and activities in which we can involve the patients. Something that has uh, changed in the last times, it's uh, the format of this activity, because uh, traditionally uh, all these uh, activities with the patients were done in a face-to-face -face format. And nowadays with the COVID-19 pandemic, we are working uh, in some cases for a year and, and more uh, in a virtual format. It's feasible, obviously. Uh, we are talking about pediatrics and they are uh, native uh, digital but also uh, is something that we need to consider in terms of methodology because it's not only a matter to provide you know, the teleconference systems, we need to have complementary tools to facilitate the, the interaction and the activities with the patients. And something that we envision for the future, it's the blended uh, methodology because in some cases the same patients can be in, uh, involved in different activities and probably it's not necessary any time to travel to the place where the meeting uh, can be performed. And also it's another uh, nice way if we mix the, the format to make more inclusive the, the activity because uh, diversity and take into account, as I said, the, the needs of the patients, it's important. And also we have patients that probably they have mobility problems and the virtual format probably it's the only way uh, of uh, involvement for, for them. There are no uh, standard rules uh, for the involvement of patients. And it means that for every project, we will know to think and for every activity, which is the best uh, methodology and which uh, tools uh, we need. Why uh, involve the patients uh, in pediatric clinical trials? As I said, the, the children, they have rights. They have the right to express by themselves anything that can consent to them and obviously health it's an important area in which they need to be uh, no, uh, involved and, and participating. There is the concept of democracy. Everyone no, obviously uh, needs to have an active uh, voice and uh, anything that can concern to the health of the patients need to be, to be based in this uh, principle. And also uh, all the stuff related to equity, diversity and participation. At the end, no, the patient's involvement facilitates the design of centered uh, clinical trials, centered uh, studies, and we need no, to, to follow and ensure the, the rights of, of the children to participate in, in science. The involvement of uh, children and, and, and young people uh, beyond no, the, to this concept of the, the patient centricity helps to design also uh, protocols according to the needs and the features of the patients. It's not the patient, the one that needs to adapt their life and many other uh, aspects to the trial. It's in the opposite sense. And this is something very important. Obviously achieve better uh, outcome measures. Ensure that we have the age appropriate patient informs uh, information documents. Any uh, document or information that needs to be addressed to the patients, if it's reviewed and improved by them, uh, obviously uh, achieve uh, the commitment about uh, this information and also improve the scientific rigor and the recruitment rates uh, of the studies. 
Nowadays, uh, there is uh, an average uh, value about the failure of the pediatric clinical trials that said that almost one in five uh, are not working good. And in this sense, no, anything, as I said, uh, as we can anticipate uh, to avoid uh, amendments or adjustments in, in the trial, the better, obviously for the study, but in first term for, for the patients and the, and the families. I will uh, encourage to all of you to uh, put your questions on comments in the in the chat box. We will uh, go beyond in the questions and answer time to the topics that uh, are already I have introduced. But before to finish my my part, I want to uh, share with all of you one activity that we did in the in the Predkin project. Uh, specifically in the cerebral palsy uh, study with the participation of the of different young persons advisory groups across Europe. The young persons advisory groups are groups of young people, usually between 11 uh, and 12 uh, to uh, 18 years old, are people uh, with a high interest in, in science. They are volunteers of pediatric hospitals. They receive training to be involved in activities related to, to science because this topic is still it's naive for the young people. They don't receive this training in the, in the schools and they help uh, the different uh, sites in which you know, these groups are, are linked to uh, collect the, the feedback from the young people perspective in different uh, initiatives. Ones are the clinical trials and obviously beyond uh, the aspects related uh, to the young uh, people perspective, also they help to us to, to ensure that uh, the language, the design and the age appropriateness of uh, the documentation or any other aspect of the studies are the, the ones uh, that they prefer. What we did in the, in the study, uh, in the we study about the cerebral palsy uh, was uh, the review about uh, all the documents addressed to the patients. It means the patient information sheet, the two versions that we have and the patient diary. We had a session in which we uh, involved uh, in every of these uh, different white packs uh, that participated across Europe. They involve an investigator, a clinical doctor with expertise in this disease. This is important because in these groups we have uh, young people that they are patients of the hospitals, but also we have uh, healthy ones the feedback and the information that the uh, experts in the disease provide in the session, it's very important to understand uh, the practical part uh, of the session that uh, it's managed by a facilitator in which uh, it depends on the project. Uh, we have uh, different methodologies to involve them. And in, the case, in this case was uh, no, a deep review of these uh, documents, but uh, the information and the background uh, context of the study is key in the success of this, of this activity. The main conclusions with the initial draft of these documents that we received is that were areas of improvements. They consider that the design was not enough friendly for, for them. They said that also were a specific content that was very formal and not easy to, to be understood. It means that obviously, you no, know, this review from the young people helps to have a second and, and final version before to move to the real world. They identify few uh, incongruencies in the in the information, and also uh, highlighted the way that we communicate with the patients because in some cases we refer to them as a subject, we refer to them as a kid, and they you no know, can provide to us this perspective that in some cases, you no, know, it's uh, something that can be translated as a trust from the patient uh, perspective. And finally, you know, uh, this is the photo of the different groups that at this moment are uh, working uh, across Europe uh, in different uh, pediatric clinical uh, sites. The founder members of the network that at this moment it's working, uh, you have here the, the list, and uh, from San Juan de Deu Children's Hospital and with these uh, funder members, we are coordinating this network that has as a main goal to ensure that you know, these uh, trained groups are uh, already available for the community research to uh, include the perspectives in activities in which it's not necessary to have the experience living with a specific condition. They provide feedback uh, in projects such as the one that I have mentioned about patient information sheets and uh, the review of the informed consent. 
and obviously they can help in the design of educational materials and other resources that uh, you know to participate in these activities it's necessary live with a specific uh, condition. Said this, I'm going to uh, stop my presentation and bring uh, the time to my colleague uh, Cor to explain about uh, other activities that we carried uh, out in the Petkin project. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the opportunity. I hope you can hear me well. I want to start my slide uh, presentation with uh, a picture of the tool that we developed for Petgren and you can find it on the website. It's a really um, basic tool to involve children and also parents in uh, uh, talking about your research plans. Um, um, I want to talk about two of the studies that we involve patients in and the first one is the same uh, we study that Begonia just uh, talked about and um, we um, had interviews with uh, parents and children um, and these were the questions that we addressed so we also talked about um, the outcome measures, the design and the randomization, uh, the practical aspects of the study and um, what things uh, children would want to do or not want to do and uh, how they would be want to be informed about the study and also what would be an appropriate way to involve patients in future studies so these were the items that we discussed and I will now go quickly through some results of the, the interviews that we had um, parents and children thought it was a really important trial because um, Botulin in um, uh, in these children is, is, uh, has an effect, but it's not a long lasting effect. So there are a lot of disadvantages also. So they really applauded the, um, the study. Um, in fact, we did not explain that the study en entails that you get either botulin or saline injection uh, with spasticity in the, in the calf legs, in the calf muscles in the legs. And um, uh, all the parents and the children endorsed uh, this study with randomization with a placebo, so the saline injection. Um, and the patients wanted to give uh, consent, so the children, but the parents said, no, uh, we see this placebo injection as a risk because we consider the botulin as effective. And if you get uh, uh, the, the uh, arm, randomization arm without the botulin, then you will be put back in your movement uh, uh, possibilities. Um, also, they said that botulin injections are traumatic. Traumatic. They are. Uh, they are very. Um, um, yeah, they cause a lot of pain, and um, so you should be really careful with such a study. And they also considered botulin just as one factor of the treatment. So it also entails a lot of uh, physiotherapy and and other measures. Um, Walking ease is the outcome of this study, but for parents, um, this is a different, they see it from a different perspective. They just want their kids going walking into adulthood. So they are not uh, concerned on the short term, but they look at uh, the treatment from the long term perspectives. Um, all thought that it was um, difficult to grasp how the, uh, the eligibility of the trial was um, established because there are a lot of cases in which it is not easy um, to see how much botulin works. Um, they're really interested in the diagnostic procedures and the measuring instruments because already now these children have to go to the hospital many times. They have to go through measuring instruments and they thought that if the trial would give them more uh, procedures and more measuring instruments that would be nice but they uh, doubted if that was uh, the, 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 the case. They thought that the written material was clear, but that uh, they needed to um, use more pictures. Um, I want to, sh to discuss shortly with you one uh, section of an interview. Uh, this young patient said yes, that he would consent to the, to the trial. Um, because he thought that maybe the effect of the saline, uh, saline the, 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 the the placebo would be the same as, as botulin because he, he thought that um, it would only work for three months and then it would the effect would wane uh, but the parent thought um, well that is cool but um, 
uh, I rather have you have the botulin injection. Um, and then you see uh, that the child also um, thinks in the shorter term um, because the botulin does not work even for three months for him. So he would just see if there was a difference. Um, and he would also stress that the botulin injection is not the only thing, but it has to be compared with other treatments. So the trial is not complete in his uh, eyes. We also had uh, a, a focus group um, from uh, with uh, uh, parents um, for, for another study. This is the pop art study. This is a study in neonatal practice and it studies the surfactant gifts um, to preterm born babies. And they give the surfactant um, uh, oropharyngeal instead of um, intratracheal. And that is a new way to do it. Um, so if your child is included, you will be randomized to this, this procedure or not. So you don't, need, you don't get the placebo. And we had this focus group and we asked uh, about the same questions as we did uh, in the interview study. But now with parents that we um, uh, contacted through a patient organization. Also, these parents thought it was a very interesting uh, clinical trial and patients would, parents would consent to it um, because uh, there was no use of a placebo. So they thought that was a, a harmless study. Uh, they did not want to be informed about every detail of this study, but they uh, expected clear communication and they preferred to have it staged. So in different phases, preferably antenatal before the child is born, they would be informed about this study. Um, they thought randomization was still problematic um, because it could be painful to hear that uh, as a parent, your child is not uh, to receive the trial medication um but nothing so even here the, there is some sort of a placebo working um they were um, interested in the follow-up but they thought that follow-up of preterm babies is already good in the netherlands so that would not be an advantage of participating in the study the materials were clear and comprehensible um but they thought that um only focus on the written uh, based information is uh, is not uh, good. They preferred to have more attention for the informed consent talk and they wanted um, also a standard operation procedure or a protocol for this talk so that every physician or every researcher would give the same uh, content in this talk and then refer to the to the written documents. Further, they thought that um, trust is very um, important and uh, they prefer that the, the treating physician is asking consent for the, for the study, whereas it is most often done by uh, a research physician. And they would also have liked uh, to have the, the, the talk about the trial, so the consent uh, conversation, be integrated in a talk that is already held for care uh, situations. Um, um, the verdict on uh, deferred consent was 50-50. Some of uh, them uh, thought that it was a good idea and others uh, were thinking it was definitely not a good idea to start a study and then ask confirm consent afterwards. We also asked them how to uh, involve parents and possibly children. And they thought that focus groups were good, but you should also involve uh, patients throughout all stages of the, of the trial. So in conclusion, also with um, the work that uh, Begonia did, we see that YPACs are um, an established and structural tool. They are there and the researcher can easily contact them. Children can be trained and also the coordinators of the of the YPEX can be trained to have the maximum uh, uh, outcome of the of the group meetings. You can have easy access. Um, it is youth specific, so you can have them deal with. Uh, you can have them judge the information, but it's not. They don't have specific knowledge about diseases for which trials are are held, and um, most of the time the contacts are one time. But of course, you can have many uh, YPAC meetings about one study. 
um, and they deal uh, uh, preferably with information materials. Whereas patients groups are a bit hard to organize, not always of course, but most of the time you need to put some effort in finding people and getting them together. Um, the patients are highly motivated, they have disease knowledge, um, and with them a more longitudinal involvement in the study is also possible. And they can really inform you about study design and planning from the patient perspective. And further, we also, of course, have, we cannot just involve youth, but we can also ask the parents in a different or in the same group. So these are the, yeah, where the, 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 the methods converge. Uh, preferably you, you use both methods, but you can also uh, use YPACs or patients groups, of course. Um, I like to thank all the, or coordinators of the YPACs and also the, the parents and patients that participated in our interviews and 